Hello again, I'm Dan Wolfitt and this is your Daily Rundown on Channel 7. Welcome now to the show, Dr. De... Uh, welcome now to the show, sorry about that Dr. Ali. Yes. Dr. Ali De Gantana. I've got that bit right, haven't I? Cool, yeah. I keep thinking it's of Eric Cantona and De Gantana. <laughs> De Gantana, yeah. Dr. I have a thing about that. Dr. Ali De Gantana is from the University of Salford and Dr. Ali is a lecturer in cybersecurity and forensics. He's worked in industry and academia with leading players in cybersecurity and e-commerce. Now, he works in the fields of digital forensics and cyber warfare. But tonight, we're talking hacking. Now, this surely only happens in the movies or to celebrities, doesn't it? Well, not, not necessarily. I have seen tons of people who have been compromised, and many of them even are aware that they have been compromised and their account has been used for different activities. And we, we live in such a, a digital world nowadays, you know, we've all got things in our pockets mm -hmm. that are a hundred times more powerful than the rockets that Apollo sent to the moon. <laughs> yeah. um, we love our phones, we love our computers, our laptops, our tablets. How are we using them every day that leaves them vulnerable to hacking? Well, the first point is that as much as you love your phone, the hackers love them as well because you are saving a lot of private information on them. There are a lot of tasks that you accomplish every day using these phones, ranging from buying and selling something online up until getting your cab uh, or taxi booked online, as well as making even some online payments. So you have a lot of information there on the same machine you are surfing the internet. Even I have seen some users which are going to not good websites on their mobile <laughs> phones. Yes. And you know, with all these bad activities, you are making yourself available to the hackers. But when I ask a question from my own computer science students, that's how many of you are installing an antivirus, a very basic security mm. protection thing on your mobile phone, they rarely raise their hand. We have wow. done a survey in our university and we find out that among computer graduates, only about 25% of them are having a really working antivirus or a security protection solution on their phone. So if your own computer students aren't following basic antivirus software on their phones and laptops and, and tablets, what is the hope for the rest of us? Well, not laptops. Laptops and PCs are different stories because you would get uh, antivirus and many of the security protection built into them. Okay. But the, there is a perception among many people, including even computer graduates, that the phones can't be hacked. And it's not true, not at all. You know, in my career, I have seen tons of phones that have been hacked either for stealing the people's information. You remember the cases in 2011 that they will steal some naked photos of of, important yeah, now celebrities, star celebrities yeah. right and, and post it online you know back then the hackers were not really good in their job because these days the hackers are getting access to your phone steal the information use your phone as a pivot point to attack others so they are no more just interested in selling your stuff but getting your phone use it as a leveraging point to get access to more important places for so example they're using our phones as a bypass to get to others yes yes you know for example you are working in a bank Right? These days, it is not easy to attack a bank network directly. But a good way to attack a bank would be to compromise the phone of some of the employees in the bank. And when they connect the phone to the bank network, you are on the network. So you would see, as we have seen a lot as well, that many of these kind of people are getting attacked on Friday night or Saturday morning, the time that they know that they are not in the office. So they can compromise their phone, put their malware or whatever they want to do, the back to on the phone, when they go back to the office, connect it back, and they will continue. This, this literally does sound like something out of the movies, though. You know, when, um, I think in like a recent Bond film, there was an employee that was targeted, something was put on their phone, and that allowed them to all get in. This is real, and this is happening 24-7, this is happening all the time. Is it happening within our country? Is it happening from people outside the country? How is it, how is it well, happening? Surely, if we've not talked to anybody, say, in Hong Kong, how is someone in Hong Kong getting into my phone? Well, it, these days, we are using our phone for different purposes. We are sending email, we are connecting to the internet, we call, we SMS, we have Bluetooth on the phone, we have all different ways that our phone is coming into the world. And what the hackers are doing is that they're trying to find you online or through your mobile phone number and contact you or send you the malicious content, right? If you look into the hacking stories, right? For example, last year, 
there was a company called uh, uh, Hacking Team based in Italy that the company has been hacked, right? The hacking team company has been mm. hacked. The hacking team was selling the hacking tools to the governments so they can spy on the people and so on and so forth. Mainly they were selling to the Middle East governments, right? And the 10 tools, out of 10 tools that they have developed, eight of them were for mobile hacking. So they wow. have found out that how easy it is to get access to the mobile phones. Many of the mobile phones are not protected, so they find it worthy to spend on it and invest their efforts so they can build more and more tools for getting access, creating backdoors, or getting to the mobile phone. So you can see that it's actually working. So these, these backdoors that you hear so much about in films, they actually exist? They are. They are, right? I mean, um, in many of our investigations, I haven't seen any big company who doesn't have a backdoor on some of their machines. So I'm just facing two types of companies, those which have been hacked and those that have been hacked and they know about it and those who have been hacked and they don't know about it, right? These are the only two scenarios that you have. You have either been hacked and you are aware of being hacked mm -hmm. and then you do something about that or you have been hacked and you're not aware of it. But with anything, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Everybody yeah. knows that if you've got a, a, you know, a, a small door that you can get in, mm -hmm. then people will get into it. Looking at uh, one of the big uh, hacking stories of just the last couple of years in America when terrorists supposedly had an iPhone and the FBI were going to Apple saying, please, can you hack this phone? We can't get into it. Apple refused. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing? Yep. It is a good thing in terms of protecting the people's privacy. But it is bad as you follow the story and you hear that the law enforcement agents could actually decrypt the data. So it means that there was a vulnerability on the phone so they can get into it. Yeah. But they are not telling to the rest of the world that what was that vulnerability mm. so we can protect the phones. And that's the bad habit that we see. You know, I have seen that these days among security experts, the guys are keep finding vulnerabilities, but instead of coming and telling to everyone so the, the manufacturers or the software developers can come with a patch, they sell it to the national security agencies or to law enforcement agencies, right? So it, it means that they are leaving a lot of us unprotected there. Yeah. And that's the bad thing about that specific story that you're talking about. And ultimately as well, like you said, somebody else helped the FBI to get into that phone. Is, is it a case where if you make security to get into phones, to get into uh, our computers and our, our networks, because many people have their own networks at home now, Wi-Fi and, mm -hmm. and lots mm -hmm. and lots of TVs connected to it and such. Mm -hmm. The harder you make it, it, you're almost setting down a challenge, you're throwing down a gauntlet to hackers, whether they be good hackers like yourself in academia or bad hackers who think another chance to profit. Let's try it. Is, is, is that the case? The harder we, we go against them, the harder they'll try to, to break? Well, uh, you know, hackers are like anyone else in the world, having their own life, their family and their priorities, right? So if you make yourself secure enough, you may not be good enough target for them. They are not going to spend a lot of time on you if you are more secure than your neighbor, because they can just switch to the neighbor and attack him, right? So that's what I always say to the people, try to have minimum security protections in place. So if the hacker is not dedicated, which means if you are not a target, mm -hmm. then they just give up and go away. to the next one other person. But the story is absolutely different if you are a valuable target or a celebrity there, right? Because then you worst the time, you worst the effort, and they try to get into your device by all different means that they have. Now, you've been around the Daily Rundown office for a couple of hours now. Uh, you've already gone through some of our staff and found out that they've been, for want of a better phrase, compromised. Their emails have been hacked, you've found their details online for sale, and this has just been for a couple of hours, and it's not just one person you've looked at, you've looked at many. If people are at home now, looking at their phone, getting the shakes, going, oh, what's happening, why, am I, I'm, why haven't I got protection? Dr. Ali, what can they do to protect themselves against hackers? First of all, Please follow cyber hygiene and cyber sanity rules. There are three main rules that you've got to follow. Do not download softwares from unknown resources. Do not click on the links that you don't know the real sender. And 
if you feel anything going wrong, please consider contacting a security expert. You know, it's, you know, the computers can get sick. And when you get sick, you got to call a doctor. And when the computer got sick or your device got sick, you definitely should consider contacting an expert for help, right? On top of that, try to keep your devices up to date with the latest patch that are in the market and at least install an antivirus on all the devices that you hold. I know that, I mean, antivirus is not the ultimate solution. There are a lot of, I mean, issues with the antivirus on mobile phones especially, but not having that would be a problem, mm -hmm. right? On top of the antivirus, you may have anti-theft, anti-phishing softwares on your phone, uh, so they can protect your device from being compromised. Uh, but try to stay safe and stay secure all the time, right? It's, it's almost, when people are online, they don't think they're in a, a real world, they think they can do anything, but surely a good rule of thumb is don't do anything online that you would do in real life. Yes, exactly, you know. Uh, I am working with some charities running training for the parents of how they can protect their child in online environments. And I am surprised that what the people really think would happen when they use the same machine that they are using for online transaction to serve to a specific websites that are known to be bad websites. Yeah. It looks like that you are having a lot of money in your pocket and going to bad areas of the town. You know what will happen. But the people are doing it just easily on the computers. There's absolutely no difference. It's just a monitor there that is separating you. The rest is exactly the same. The same dangers out there are applicable to cyber world. So don't underestimate it. I like the fact that after you've been on the Daily Roundtown tonight, lots of people will now be going, how do I get antivirus software on my phone? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. If you've done you anything happen. tonight, yeah. that's what's happened. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Thank Degantana, you. Oh, I love that name. Dr. Dali, uh, Dr. Ali Degantana, thank you so much for coming thank on you. to The Daily thank Rundown. You. Really, really interesting chatting to you. Right, next, Jackie will be taking her place back on the Blue Bonquette with her something to say. So see you in about three minutes' time. This is The Daily Rundown on Channel 7.